My wife and I bought a 1960s fixer-upper and it needed a lot of work. We turned the kitchen from ugly into absolutely gorgeous. We turned an old garage conversion into a beautiful master bedroom and master closet. But one of the rooms that needed the most attention in this house was the living room. This space was big and dark and dated and it just needed a lot of love. So we started a four year multi-phase process of transforming this living room into something beautiful. And in this video, we're gonna show you every step of that process. Really quick, we wanna share with you a new product in the fragrance category. If you've heard of Scentbird, Drift is their new sister company and creates air care products for your home and your car. All materials they use are sustainable and their scents are made with natural essential and fragrance oils. I got their scent of the month, which is called, I think you say it, Apres. <laughs> it's a French word, A-P-R-E-S. Somebody will probably correct me in the comments, but I was pleasantly surprised at how much I actually like the scent. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's perfect for the cooler months, and to me it has a rich and woodsy smell which reminds me of being in the mountains. Mm. Very mountainous. I like it. Their car products include stone freshener, wood freshener, and a metal one. For home, they have candles, reeds, and home sprays. Drift is truly a one-stop shop to make your home and car smell amazing. What's cool about car fresheners is that you can get them as a subscription. First, you receive a starter kit with a clip and scent, and then you can just get monthly refills as they recommend changing it every 30 days. The best part is their scent of the month, which features new limited edition scents. They're inspired by the season and the memories and emotions attached to it. With scenting an environment, nose blindness becomes a real thing. So scent of the month also gives you some variety, so it's something new for your nose every month. Their subscription is very flexible. You can change your scent choice, your delivery frequency, or cancel your subscription anytime you like. Make sure to use my coupon code DIYWIFE55 for 55% off your first month at Drift. So let's back up and give you the story of this living room. When we bought this house a few years ago, the living room needed a lot of love. First, we started by painting the walls and ceilings and adding new flooring, which made a huge difference. At that time, we were actually renting our house out on game day weekends, and so that meant that after we bought this house, we had six weeks until our first rental, which meant that we needed to finish up all of those initial renovations and furnish our entire house in just six weeks. And it's worth mentioning here that we actually sold almost all of our furniture with the last house, and so we were basically starting from scratch. <laughs> so when it came to buying furniture for the new house, we had to pick things that would arrive on time, and we were also working with a budget because we were renovating our entire house. I had already built our coffee table several years ago, and for time's sake, and just because I love the piece, we decided to keep that in here. And then I picked up two accent chairs at Target because they were in stock, they fit the space, and we found a beautiful white slip covered sofa at a local furniture store. My one item that I did splurge on was our leather sofa from Article, but I knew that even if we changed up the furniture in this space, I had other places that I would use it and so I was confident making that purchase. So after our initial renovations and quick furniture purchases, the room was looking much improved and ready for game day rentals. Even after finishing all of that up and getting it looking really good, I knew that that wasn't the end of my vision for this space. After a good break from all of the renovation craziness, I started feeling inspired and was ready for phase two of this makeover, which involved two pretty big projects. First, we undertook a massive project and decided to build the fireplace of my dreams. We're fast forwarding a bit here, but Andrea actually spent a couple of years dreaming this build up and then it took a few weeks to actually complete it. This one element was the missing piece that this room really needed to anchor it and it completely changed the feel of the room. The second project in phase two was a bit smaller, but it still had a big impact. I installed and styled these clean white shelves and it was a relatively simple project, but again, it really changed the look of the room. So after phase two, this room was looking really good, but there were a few big changes I still had in mind. And that led us to phase three of this living room transformation, where we started our final updates to this space, which was all about finding or building the right furniture for this living room. And finally, after four years of planning and saving, we were ready to invest in furniture that really fit this space and functions well for our family. 
I really love the warmth that our leather sofa brought to this space, and so I knew that I wanted to incorporate leather somewhere. When I saw these leather accent chairs, I knew that they were perfect. They're huge, surprisingly comfortable, and just so unique. Then the next piece of furniture being delivered was a big one, the biggest of all. <laughs> I've envisioned a huge oversized sectional in this room for a long time now. I love the idea of our entire family being able to fit comfortably on one huge sectional and I just feel like a sectional brings that coziness that this massive room really needs. After a lot of researching and shopping around, I ended up leaning on this beautiful linen slip covered sectional from Made in Home. We had waited months for this couch and delivery day was really exciting but by the end of the day I knew something just was not right. So once this sectional was all set up in place something just felt a little bit off and to be honest I wasn't even gonna say anything to Dean I was like I'll figure it out it could just be the coffee table maybe it's some other things that need to be changed maybe it just needs pillows so when she wasn't 100% thrilled with it I was like no this is not gonna work we've put too much time and investment into this we gotta figure something out. Something felt off, which is a little bit disappointing after years of planning this because I had put so much thought into it. Then for it to get here and be like underwhelming was a little bit hard to swallow. <laughs> was a little overwhelming. Thankfully, Made in Home has an incredible return policy and so we started planning for our exchange. So after deciding we were going to exchange the sectional, I called my good friend Justine to get her help thinking through all of the details. We talked through size options, color options, and we were able to really pinpoint what it was that was feeling off about the first sectional. First, it wasn't quite big enough for this room. And second, while I love the look of linen and the sectional itself was beautiful, just there was so much beige and light color happening in this room and so I felt like we just needed a little bit more warmth and contrast. In the end, I decided to order the same section that we used in our friend's house but in a different color. So several months later, it was finally time for the new sectional to be delivered. Or the new, new sectional? Is that how you say that? <laughs> and thankfully, delivery included setup because these couches looked really heavy. I do not envy that job, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't. Even as they were bringing these inside, I knew that we had made the right choice and they were looking so good. So are you pleased? Yes, 100%. So happy with it this time. <laughs> We also made a trip to the antique show in Round Top, Texas to see if we could find a very specific piece to fit Andrea's vision for one of the walls in our living room. It's pretty light, really. Little baby. Heavy, man. Ow! Oh. What do we have done to ourselves? Thankfully, the trip was a success and we found the perfect antique sideboard that was exactly what I had in mind. But of course, true to form, we didn't just buy every piece of furniture for our living room. Andrea actually designed and built several pieces of beautiful custom furniture to fit this space. She started by building an elegant coffee table which required driving to a specialty lumber store to get beautiful white oak for this build. This build was relatively simple, but it was definitely a lot of work and took a solid week to finish. Oh my gosh. It's sturdy, boys. Woo! In the end, it was worth every bit of effort to have the exact coffee table I wanted that perfectly fit the space. Next, Andrea started building a custom bookcase which marked her largest furniture build to date. A project of this scale required an entire day of gathering materials. We should probably go to Home Depot. You gotta be kidding me. Then it was time to start building this thing and this took longer than any other piece of furniture I've ever made, taking several weeks to complete.
<laughs> this is so big. Once it was finally finished, it just felt like it was meant to be here all along. And more than just looking amazing, we keep joking that this thing could be like a family heirloom, like our grandkids could fight over this thing. You know what I'm saying? And that only left a few projects to finish this living room off. When I first built our fireplace, I had envisioned a Roman clay finish with subtle texture and movement to it. Unfortunately, the lighter colors of Roman clay have barely any visible color variation, and while it looked great, I wanted just a little bit more texture to it. After thinking on it for a long time, I finally decided to use a slightly darker shade of Roman clay. exactly what I had in mind to begin with and has a perfect subtle amount of texture to it now. After finishing the fireplace, I added these linen slip covered ottomans that I grabbed on sale from McGee Co. and I feel like the slip covered style as well as the linen really helped balance out the other furniture in the room. One final area that I had been brainstorming for months was the large brick wall on both sides of the fireplace. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out what to put there that helped fill the large space, but also didn't feel too cluttered. After getting this chair in ottoman, it finally clicked and I made this little reading corner with an antique dresser, a lamp, and a vintage piece of artwork, and it just feels perfect. And that finally leads us to today's project, which is the final project in this living room transformation. I have been looking for the perfect oversized mirror for the wall above the antique piece we found, but after searching for quite a while, I still couldn't find exactly what I wanted, and anything that was even close was thousands of dollars. So what did you do about it? <laughs> In true DIY fashion, I did what I did with any other project where I can't find what I want or don't have the budget for what I want, and I made one myself. All right, let's show them how you got it done. So the last project is going to be building a really large mirror to go on that cool antique piece that we got and I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh but I love the round mirror. I do too but I feel like I can do a little bit better. So we have ordered a mega piece of mirror from the glass store. We're going to go pick up wood for the frame then we're going to go grab the mirror and we'll come back and get to building. Lovely. Let's do it. Why are you limping? I broke oh. my toe, man. So this morning, while getting the kids ready for school, I heard Andrea crying out <laughs> upstairs, saying, Dean, I have broken my toe. <laughs> and I came upstairs, and this is what I saw. Puss. If you have a squeamish stomach, then look away in three, two, one. So this is what I came upstairs and saw this morning. But thankfully, she says she's reset it herself, yeah? I did. This is not the first time I've broken my toe where it was sticking out to the side like this. <laughs> All right, we need to get out of here and stop talking about toes. <laughs> little family tennis action. This up uh, with the juice box. Oh, oh my gosh. That was not expected. So this is a rental car because our Honda minivan got hit last year and we had to take it into the shop and then we got it back out and it wasn't actually fixed so we had to take it back into the shop. This is another rental. But anyways, this is the first time I put the seats down in here so I don't really know how this all works but I like that. Alright. Come on kids. We're in. What's the old trash clean out from the kids, huh? You pull up the seats and you look under and you're like, kid, why were you storing all this trash under your seats, man? Oh, 
How's the toe feeling? It hurts a little bit. Well, I'll be driving and therefore not filming. So do you want to try filming? All right, well, as usual, we are headed to, you guessed it, Lowe's. Where else would we be going to start off a project? So we're gonna get some materials for the mirror, is that correct? Some wood, correct. I'm guessing? Yeah. I'm trying to do your job, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> can you push me on the cart so I don't have to walk? <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> You gotta film the low sign. I always film the low sign. See your best effort. <laughs> I could push you in a lumber cart. Babe, that is for you. Come on. It's right there. Right. If you don't take it, I'm gonna take it. I love Lowe's music, you know? Is that your walker? Alright, so next we are going to the glass door to pick up glass for the mirror. Glass for the mirror. We're going to pick up pick er, up the mirror for the mirror. <laughs> we're going to pick up the mirror for the mirror. Like I said, I'm trying to do your job and I'm not very good at it. It's, you know, I'm refining my craft, it's you could say. It's a job. Yeah, it is. Some yeah. big shoes to fill. They asked me to back into bay number one. They're gonna be like, you wanna put this in a minivan? And we'll be like, that's right. This is gonna be amazing. All right, how you feeling about it? I mean, they said it's probably fine. They said they'll replace it if it breaks. They put it in and said, it's good. They were great. It made it still in one piece. Amazing, amazing, yeah? I would have never put that in there like that. That's why I brought plywood. I just figured it had to be propped up on something solid. <laughs> We're doing this with a broken toe. I feel like such a goon. Perfect day for carrying heavy things. <laughs> Here. How are you feeling about it so far? I like it. It's big. It takes some getting used to. I can see your face. He's like, it's gonna look way better with a frame. And who else has a four and a half foot by four and a half foot mirror? Nobody, babe. Okay, so I'm ready to start making the frame and I've been thinking through kind of a different idea since this is so big and so heavy. I'm gonna do the frame a little bit different. I'm gonna use my router to kind of route out a groove that the mirror is actually gonna sit in. But that way we're not waiting on glue to dry to be able to hold the mirror up. And in case anybody's wondering, we set this here because it seemed like the safest place versus like leaning it against the wall and we've got four kids running around. So plus, you know, if you know me at all, I had to see it in place. <laughs> I've measured just to double check that it's the measurements I asked them to cut. It's spot on, so we're gonna go start making some cuts and start building this frame. You really need some crutches, man. Wow, this is about 30 times easier. Hey, you're putting it backwards. Can you spin it around? I can. Okay, so I have a little scrap, one by two here. I'm gonna test this out and make sure that my quarter inch router will actually fit on the mirror. But I'm gonna do it on a test piece and just make sure this idea is even gonna work. Okay, so we're gonna go check and see if the mirror fits in that groove. Fingers crossed that it does, cause <laughs> my next router bit size is double this and that's not gonna work. Fits like a glove. Wow.
what happened? Oh, it's fine. This is the top or the bottom piece. My bit came loose. Look, it went all the way through the board. That's why it stopped, is it was going through a lot of wood. Dang, I've never had that happen before. I did unplug it before I started messing with the bit, and it's always a good idea if you're gonna be changing your blade. Anything where you're, you know, gonna be touching the moving parts, just unplug your tool first. Round two? Yep. Alright, I'm going to add pocket holes to the back of my top and bottom boards, which are my shorter ones, because they'll tee into my other boards and that's how I'm going to attach it all together. Okay, so since I'm going to be assembling my frame as I put it onto the mirror, I want to paint it first so I don't have to try and like tape off my mirror or take the whole mirror back outside again. So. I'm gonna spray paint all of my boards black first, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of distressing and come back with like a brown stain just to get kind of a cool black and brown antique effect because I think that is what will really look best in the room. Okay, so the paint is all dry on here. I'm gonna use my sander to do a really light distressing because then I'm gonna come back with the same brown stain that I used on the inside of the cabinet to cover up all of the distressed areas just to give it kind of an antique and unique look and just not solid black. After I finished staining the wood for the frame, we brought it inside and then moved the mirror onto our coffee table so we could get ready to attach the frame. After sliding the mirror into the grooves that I routed out, I attached the frame around it using pocket holes and screws. My pocket holes are all on the top and the bottom of the frame and so none of them will be visible. Just do it. Yeah. All right, so we're actually gonna pause for the day. It's 
it's just time to be done. Our kids are off school, and so we're gonna set it back in place. I just have one little detail left where we're gonna cut a little decorative trim that I'm gonna glue in place here, and then it's gonna be done. And just for the record, because I feel like I'm preemptively defending Dean, he keeps telling me, hey babe, I really feel like maybe you should stop. And I'm like, no, but I just really want to finish this mirror. And so he is not making me work with my broken toe. He's encouraging me to stop. And once we finish this project, I think I'll take a little break. <laughs> yes, you will take a break. I'm going to have a forced break off of any big projects. So we are finally ready to finish up this mirror. We took several days off to let my toe start to heal. And then we had so much rain and just freezing weather. So first thing I need to do is measure inside of the frame that I already built, because I have one more little decorative piece that I'm gonna miter and then attach to the inside of that frame. All right, so I'm gonna use my nifty little stop that is, you know, a part of this, what do you call this, the stand. That way I can measure my first one and then once I get that one cut, I'll just be able to get the rest of them up there, cut them quick, because they're all the same length. I love this stand. It's been like worth every penny. Una mas? Yep. It's C. After making all of my cuts, I was ready to paint the boards with the same black that I used on the rest of the frame. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your paint can. Shake your paint can. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these and paint the back side of them too because when you glue something onto a mirror, you'll be able to see like the back of whatever you glue onto there. So you always wanna make sure you paint or stain it or finish it because you'll see a little bit of it and it looks really bad if you don't. Is this coat number two? Yeah. I'm so close to making it with just one can that I can feel I have barely any left. One can for the whole frame, so for the other part too. Ooh, I think that's it, we got them. You hear that? like almost completely empty. After the paint dried, I gave everything a light sanding. Then I came back with the same brown stain and brushed it on and then wiped away the excess. All right, we've let these dry in the sun for a little bit. We're ready to take them inside and make sure, see if they fit and hopefully install them. Hey, that looks pretty cool, right? Yes, it does. Hey, last piece. It's a little too long. I'm trying to see. I'll need to trim it. This one, those are all so tight in there, they're not even glued in. And I'm like, you know, it kind of looks fine. <laughs> Maybe we won't even glue it. Let's go see if it fits. It's like a glove. I don't even need glue. It's all just like staying in place. You're a pro. It looks like an old mirror. 
and it ties in with the black from the cabinet but it's not too black because it's like distressed and finally four years after we started working in this living room it is finally finished and we love it Well, I would say it was well worth the wait. I absolutely love this living room. I love spending time in here. I love looking at it. I love hanging out with our family in here. It's just such a beautiful and inviting space. Yeah, I am 100% happy with pretty much everything in this room. Like it, it finally just feels right. Like the furniture is the right scale and you walk in here and it actually feels Cozy. It's really become our favorite room in the house. Yeah, I just love how there's so many little moments in this room. Everywhere you look, there's something that's unique, that's been customized. A lot of TLC has gone into it. And so it just feels like every part of this room is really special. And I love that. We've literally been working on this space off and on for four and a half years. Hopefully that encourages you. I know sometimes it's easy to look at a highly edited video of a project and think, wow, my stuff takes way longer than that. but. A lot of times in real life projects take years to get the vision and then actually be able to complete it or maybe it's you know you need to have the vision and then save up but it's okay to like start on it or to yeah. wait till you've lived in the space and really kind of figure out what really works here what do we need for our family or our lifestyle and it's worth it well we want to say thank you to you all watching for coming along for this ride and we want to say too that any of the projects we did in this room we'll link those down in the description so you can watch the extended version of every single project that we did in this living room as well as you can get all of the product links for everything we have in the living room and with that said we will catch you in another episode very soon so thanks again to drift for sponsoring today's video be sure to check out the link in the description below angeli <laughs> angeli andrea actually angeli who's angeli oh man i'm gonna <laughs> Golly, you're rubbing off on me. It's your fault. It's I'm your gonna, fault. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. My toes itches. Okay, are you done picking your nose mm -hmm. or? Okay, we can go. I'll take. <clears throat> okay. I'm so hungry. It's my fault. It is your fault. I know. <laughs> Eat lunch. What's your deal? Lunch comes around and you're like, nah. But last time, nobody would set it for me. They kept trying to send me somewhere else because they were all scared they were going to mess it up. And it was very obvious. They were like, how do you know it's broken? I was like, I mean, it's like the Because bed. it's pointed that <laughs> There's way. There's an L shape <laughs> in the bone that's not supposed to be there. Because my toe is shaped like an L. And that's no. not right. And then I'd finally get there and they'd be like, oh, yeah, it's broken, but we can't do anything. And I'm like, dang it. And so what happened last time, this is years ago, is I taped, they told me to just tape them together. And I did that. And I was out in our garden and this like, I forget what they're called. They're like these ground boring wasps that are just like this big. This sounds like a jet and it like flew by me. And so I just took off running and forgot about my toe. And when I stepped on it, it popped my toe back straight because it was taped, you know, pulling it. And then I didn't have to have anybody set it after that. They said, hey, it looks good. Just keep it splinted and it'll heal. And so I said, you That's know right. what? I'm going to duct tape my toes together again. So I did, and then I put some weight on it, and it popped, and I screamed really loud. I reset my I toe. Fixed it. <laughs> I like, feel, ah, okay. I feel so thrifty. I just saved. I just saved me a trip to like the specialist. You did. You're so thrifty. You're so tough. I mean, hey, DIY doctoring. Oh right? gosh, no. The DIY. No. All right, let's Do get we need like here. a disclaimer? We're not giving medical advice. Don't <laughs> try this at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts! Stop filming me! Acme glass! Woo! <laughs> Key fob has left the car! 
Have you seen this uh, artwork on your scrap wood here? <laughs> yeah. Creativity abounds in our house, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, Asher man. Yo, man, what are you doing? What? I'm dressing up the dude workforce. Behind the scenes is the dance. Uh. Hey, hey. I was oh. using Andrea as a block because filming mirrors is super hard. <laughs> filming so, mirrors or filming like the reflective glass? Yeah, the reflective the glass because you can like see, your, see yourself waving around in there. Look how good it looks. So I had to Can you see like the black behind in the Andrea. black? You're talking about your stuff, I'm talking about my stuff. Could you quit interrupting me? 